In 2008, everything Elon Musk held dear was on the brink of collapse. Love was unraveling. Tesla was on life support, and SpaceX dreams were crushing back to Earth. With every dime from his PayPal fortune at stake, Musk found himself closer to a breaking point than ever before. Yet, it is in these moments of profound uncertainty that Elon's character truly shone. Nothing in his life was a given, everything was a gamble. But it's this very chaos that Musk thrived upon. So let's embark on this journey, navigating through the darkest year of his life, to discover the resilience of a man whose every setback was a setup for a greater comeback. Let's begin. Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, I should say, all of the companies, but, but I think particularly uh, SpaceX and Tesla, although they're you know, in, a, in, a, in a good position today, uh, they went through some super tough times. Um, and, and in fact, uh, for SpaceX, uh, I, I reserved the capital to, to, do three, to have three launch failures, or, or to, to withstand two launch failures and, and have the third one be a success, sort of three strikes. Um, and actually, we had three launch failures. We were just able to scrape enough money together for a fourth flight that succeeded. Uh, in 2008, and then also in 2008, uh, as Steve knows, we, <laughs> we 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 got the Tesla financing round done on the last hour of the last day. It was uh, like 6 p.m. December 24, 2008. And if we hadn't gotten it done then, uh, the, the company would have gone bankrupt a few days after Christmas. So Chapter 26: Divorce. This was back in 2008, and Elon's first wife, her name was Justine. And when being interviewed, she said, I met him when he didn't have much at all. The accumulation of wealth and fame changed the dynamic. And this was in the midst of storm at SpaceX and Tesla in 2008, as we mentioned in the beginning. Elon would often drift into a deep zone of concentration, reminiscent of his school days almost where the world around him faded away because he was thinking so deeply. Now, imagine this. Later, when the writer shared with Justine all the hurdles and challenges Elon was grappling with at the time, her eyes welled up with tears. He never told me any of this, she whispered. You'd think he would have told her, right? But the twist? Well, Elon, he kept all that to himself. And he probably never realized that he just needed to let her in on what was going on and she would really understand. Or at least they would communicate and try to work it out. Because after all, she was his wife, his partner. And here comes one specific story. One day, as the sun dipped below the horizon, Elon's wife sat him down. She tried to teach him about empathy, saying, Elon is not about thinking or analyzing. It's about feeling, truly feeling the other person, opening your heart and tune in with that vibration. Elon pondered this, his eyes distant. While he acknowledged its importance in personal relationships, he believed his unique way of thinking was what drove his business to success. As the room grew silent, Justine softly added, perhaps what makes you challenging as a husband is what makes you brilliant as a leader. The weight of her words hung in the air, and for a moment, the invisible Elon Musk was just a man, trying to bridge the gap between his heart and mind. And it leaves us pondering, how vital is emotional intelligence and empathy in steering a successful company? Especially in a world driven by targets and KPIs, do feelings hold any weight? Drop your thoughts down below. How do you balance the fine line between driving results and understanding emotions? Let's get a conversation started in the comment section because every perspective is a learning opportunity for all. And then tw chapter 27, Talula, also 2008 in London. Him and Talula, they met in a club in London introduced by mutual friends. We ended up having breakfast together, she says. And at the end, he said, I'd really like to see you for lunch. And then after lunch that day, he said, well, that was really wonderful. Now I'd like to see you for dinner. 
So over the next three days, they had almost every meal together and went shopping at toy store to get gifts for his kids. And fast forward, they had only known each other for two weeks when they decided to get engaged. One day, as they floated in the rooftop pool, she couldn't help but express how surreal everything felt. It's only been two weeks, and we're already planning our future together. She giggled, with a playful smirk. She added, "What's the worst that could happen?" But Elon, the ever deep thinker, responded seriously, "One of us might not be around forever." And somehow, in that moment, she found that very romantic. And keep in mind, in the midst of all this, which is exactly what we're talking about, Chapter Twenty Eight, Strike Three. SpaceX 2008. For this third attempt, Musk was all in, gambling on success. The rocket would carry on an expensive 180-pound Air Force satellite and two smaller satellites from NASA. And SpaceX had just made a change to the cooling system of their Merlin engine. It was a little tweak, nothing major, and they tested it on the ground, and everything looked good. But in space. It was a different ball game, and this actually happened during the launch. This tiny change made the rocket spurt up even after it was supposed to stop. And just as things were going smoothly during the launch, it accidentally bumped into the second stage, and suddenly the video feed cut off. Everyone knew the rocket and its cargo were crashing down. I imagine the weight of that moment. Here's Elon Musk. Going through a personal storm with his marriage, SpaceX, and Tesla, all at once, he didn't even have a place to call home. The mood was so tense, and everyone expected him to lash out, maybe point fingers and fire somebody, but he didn't. Instead, he revealed they had parts for another rocket back in LA and asked them to build it fast, like in six weeks, kind of fast. It was a moment that changed the vibe entirely. The team felt a rush of determination, ready to face the challenge head-on. They were all in together with Musk. A reporter, trying to understand how Musk stayed so hopeful, reached out to him, and Musk he was straight to the point. Optimism, pessimism, fuck that. We're making this work. Period. It was clear Musk was determined to turn things around. No matter the odds. In the face of overwhelming odds, Elon Musk's journey through 2008 served as a powerful testament to the indomitable human spirit. Each challenge he faced, whether in love or in business, wasn't just an obstacle, but an invitation to be better, to be more efficient, and to rise again. It reminds us all that true resilience is born not from avoiding storms, but from learning to dance in the rain. At the heart of his story is a question for all of us: in our own lives, when faced with uncertainty and chaos, do we surrender or do we push forward and focus on the vision beyond the present moment? For it's in these critical moments that our true characters. Are shaped, and the path to our own stars becomes clear.